Hello and welcome to Contra Mundum. I am your host, Pastor Andrew Isker, and, and please welcome my co-host CJ Engel. Hello, CJ. Hey, Andrew. How you doing? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How was your week? Uh, my wife listens to these, and she tells me, "Hey, you're supposed to banter in podcasts before they start." So I have to ask you about your week. Uh, apparently, uh, how was your week, CJ? My week was—I don't even remember. <laughs> uh, all, <laughs> yeah, I never remember. Uh, but I think it, it, Easter happened between our last recording and this one, so that was always yes. nice. Um, by the way, this is—we didn't really plan on talking about this. But did you notice um, the Google thing? Like, it's just, I mean, it's so typical yes. and it's expected. Yeah. So it's not even, it's not even newsworthy, but it's just hilarious. You know, you can look onto Google on Easter Sunday and there's just zero reference it, uh, you know, to Easter. But the, the, the crazier thing is you search, what day is it? And, and nothing comes mm -hmm. up about Easter either. Like, which mm -hmm. it's like, it's like taunting, right? It's like obvious what's going on here. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's taunting. I think it's kind of like just that subversive little like mocking bragging a little bit just flaunting their arrogance you know about how much they despise christianity and the in the christian world um oh yeah i thought that was interesting oh, yeah. well yeah there's that i mean i saw it was, it was a pretty funny tweet I, i'm gonna butcher it uh it was it was it was really funny uh it said like yeah google will have every day something celebrating you know shaniqua blah 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 star wars name the first indigenous woman to ever have an abortion uh but then, but then when it's like easter the most important holiday in the christian calendar uh <laughs> blank just normal google page <laughs> and it's like yeah but what, what does that tell you it tells you like they'll celebrate anything they'll celebrate everything every obscure religion they'll celebrate islam judaism all this stuff but when it comes to like actual traditional Christianity, the Christian religion, as it's always been for the last two thousand years, they they will go radio silent about it because, well, what's a threat? Christianity is to the yeah. entire project. Um, so that tells you one thing: if they oppose it, it's probably good um, in this insane world. So that's that's what we're going to start off with. Is yeah, so happy. Hopefully, everybody had a happy Easter, um, and we certainly did here. Uh, it's finally, you know, it went from like six, six inches of snow to ninety degrees here in Minnesota. So we don't really have a spring; we just go right into summer. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah, it's 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 been a wonderful, wonderful to have. Beautiful weather, sunny skies, um, and we got also got another gift uh, in our Easter basket this week. We got an article from in Chronicles magazine from uh, Dr. Paul Gottfried, uh, who you know pretty well. Um, and so, tell me about this article that that uh, Gottfried uh, wrote. Can I call him Paul? Is that okay? We I haven't had him on the show. We haven't had him on the show, so I can't. Call oh yeah, him Paul yet. Uh, he's actually yeah. he's actually really approachable. Um, it's it's okay. funny. He's such an old guy. Like it took months to train him how to use Zoom and his camera. Like like his first record, <laughs> like any recording that you see on him, like half the time the camera's like shooting up here on his bald head, <laughs> you know. And so finally we we trained him like that the ca the camera angle corresponds with his with his uh you know where his face is so um <laughs> he figured so that out <laughs> it is it's great it's great and I, and actually I'm interviewing him again next week for Chronicles magazine and we're going to talk about like his five most influential books or authors that he's read uh so that'll be a really good episode too yeah just to have him I'm sure he's 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 you know He's forgotten more than I'll probably ever know, right? And so, um, especially on the on the subjects, you know, on politics and and the history of conservatism and everything else. Yeah. Let, let, so yeah, let five, me five, five, just five books. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah ahead. So so okay. So who who is Paul? I mean, Paul Paul's like I, I call it. So I have a biography in the works of him. I'm doing I'm doing two things, uh, three things uh, related to Paul because he's kind of near and dear to my own heart, my own ideological development. Um, so I know Paul very well, and I want to kind of study him as sort of um, a project of mine over the next few years. So I'm editing, uh, I'm actually writing a, a full intellectual biography of Paul Gottfried, and I'm also editing a Festrift, you know, an essay, a collection of essays yes. in honor of him. And I'm also editing like his best essays over, you know, 40 years of, of writing. So it's kind of like a trilogy of Paul Gottfried that I'm working on. Um, so when you have someone like James Lindsay calling him an idiot, um, that, you know, that, hold on, I just have, just let me finish laughing at, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it awakens, it awakens my ire, you know, it's, it's just completely yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Um, you know, Paul, he, he had a very tumultuous relationship with the conservative movement. Um, he, he kind of, he kind of was born into the milieu of like the, um, he, I mean, he's a Jew, so he, he has, he has a very mainstream 
Republican um, like uh, context of his own, you know, mm -hmm. of his own origins. Um, but, you know, as he grew into the 70s and he recognized what was happening in the world, um, he began to he was a student of like one of the most important new left writers, Herbert Marcuse. He was a student of Marcuse and Marcuse, like he plays a very key role in the transformation of the left from a Marxist phenomenon to what Paul calls a post-Marxist phenomenon. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he, he witnessed it. He was there. He was a student of Marcuse yeah. and he became more and more, you know, belonging to what he calls the old right, you know, the, the, the pre-war right. Um, he's a student of the European conservative uh, ideological history uh, and also modern European intellectual history. Um, he studies things from a very macro level. He's, he's very academically oriented. He's you're not going to find, you know, his you're not going to find him in Fox News or something. He's very much an intellectual. <laughs> um, and so he doesn't he doesn't belong in in James Lindsay's. Uh, he, he doesn't he doesn't, they live and operate in two completely different worlds. Well, let's um, stop. Let's stop for one second. I mean, maybe yeah. some of the people you know watching and listening to this have no idea who James Lindsay is. Hope, you know, if, if you don't. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> you're, you're luckier than we are uh, because he is uh, he's this. Um, and correct me if you know if I'm, I'm being inaccurate here, CJ, but he is this this really like he's a liberal. I mean, not just a liberal in the in every sense. Um, he is he is a, a man of the left. Um, and, and so what happens is he's this guy. What did he do? Like write a bunch. He, he, he came to notoriety because he made a bunch of fake dissertations. Yeah, but that's uh, that actually super woke. Um, which is actually hilarious. Like, I, like, I, yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah. Jen. Yeah. Like, I, I so far so good. That. Yeah, that's yeah, great. So far so good. Like, cool. If you would have stuck to that great uh but he came became this prominent guy because this is what the conservative movement does is it's like oh we have a we have someone on the left that kind of likes us a little bit so we're going to make him our spokesman you know like just idiotic stuff that that we you know do or, or they do uh maybe we we don't want to lump ourselves in with them uh but they they bring guys like this in it's like oh here's this this left-wing guy this atheist uh you know <laughs> Um, um, you know, Lolbert almost kind of kind of guy. Like he's got he's, he's got the fedora tipping, you know, atheism and everything else. Um, and and here, yeah, he gets into this Twitter fight with uh with well with Chronicles magazines, you know, um, Twitter guy, which maybe is you, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't reckon to identify who it is. Um, but um, anyway, you know, and and it says that oh, Paul Godfrey is an idiot. When when he says partly because well, Lindsay's entire the entire shtick is that wokeism is communism is Marxism they're in they're they're indistinguishable they're the exact same thing because he his whole thing is to trace the the intellectual genealogy going back yeah going back to these new left thinkers um you know to Foucault and 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 I mean and all all of them right. And he, he name drops these guys, and he he reads all their their huge long philosophical tomes, uh, because it's it's really impressive to like the normie. It's like oh, this guy's really well read. He's read all this stuff. But the reality is like he has no read whatsoever on the actual situation on the ground. He's, he's maybe like a million miles wide, but like one inch deep on any of this stuff. Whereas Paul is a million miles wide and a million miles deep. And and so it's just it's utterly laughable that a guy like James Lindsay, uh, who is a sued, he is he's not as smart as he thinks he is, and he's he's a joke to say, Whoa, Paul Godfrey is an idiot. Because whether I mean if you if wherever your politics are, you you can't say that Paul Godfrey is an idiot and doesn't know anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, so, you just can't say that. Yeah, so let me let me just say this too. Um first of all, I think on the very he's very narrowly read. OK, and on the things that he's very, yeah. very narrowly read on, he's fine. Uh, generally speaking, he, he recognizes and he can uh, absorb a lot of the major themes of what he's read. The problem Lindsay. The, you're talking about Lindsay, Lindsay. Yeah, 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 Lindsay. yeah not Paul. <laughs> right. Um, so the, the problem is, is that he has no context for those debates yes. outside of his narrow realm. Whereas mm. Paul, like he's he's kind of a student of like things at a much broader scale, so he mm. recognizes what James is reading and where that fits in with the overall milieu of the European left mm. and even the American um, and Asiatic left. Like like so yeah. so James will reference a lot of like the Maoist scholars, 
Yeah. And, you know, Paul's already responded, you know, to some of those claims, too. But yeah. the, the context of yeah. this debate was basically the, the theme of the April Chronicles magazine. And the yes. April Chronicles magazine was addressing the question, is uh, is is wokeism a deviant? Is it like a downstream from Marxism? Is it a type of yeah. Marxism? That was the way. And the and the, the magazine actually had both views presented. So if you look yeah. at the magazine, it actually has someone who would have taken James's position. Paul's position, like always, and if you read his book on con the conservative movement in America, um, he's a very nuanced thinker. He's a very careful thinker. He's, he's he has mm -hmm. he's very he d distinguishes things in ways that even like his his son who like helps him edit his work kind of gets frustrated with sometimes. So that's just who he is. And Paul came to the conclusion that no, wokeism represents a, a new left. And it came out of the failures of liberalism. Not, yeah. not It's not caused directly by liberalism as if yeah. liberalism necessarily breaks into this, but rather wokeism arose because liberalism could not hold its own authority within the political structure, within the political framework of, mm -hmm. of the West. Uh, so wokeism is a replacement for liberalism and liberalism did not have the means within itself to prevent its own takeover. That's just a classic yeah. Gottfried insight. Um, and so wokeism comes from that. Marxism is dead as far as, 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 far as Gottfried is concerned. Yeah. There are Marxists out there, but for the most part, it died with the Soviet Union. There's like yeah. the, uh, most of the scholarship, the milieu of the scholarship has kind of left the materialistic, you know, dialectical view of, of mm -hmm. history kind of behind itself. It failed. And so the wokeism is, 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 is represents a post Marxist left. Uh, and so, so Gottfried, you know, articulated this position and then Chronicles tweeted out uh, uh, not an excerpt, but just a summary. Well, it was, I think it was an excerpt of that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, J basically saying that it rose out of the failures of liberalism. It did not come from Marxism. And James thought that was ridiculous because his entire shtick, his entire identity is wrapped up in calling this thing Marxist. And he has a book on woke. I think he, I think it's, I think he has a book on woke Marxism or something, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, it, it, it's so, yeah. so this, so, I mean, James is like his, his own like uh branding identity is wrapped up in this debate for sure. Oh, a hundred percent. And it, and it matters a lot. And so, you know, if you made it this far through this discussion, you might be thinking, well, what is, what is the intellectual genealogy of wokeism really matter? It's just, it's bad. It's bad. Like, I mean, if you're listening at home and you're, you're thinking about this stuff and thinking, well, why does it, why is, who, who cares where it came from? They are trying to you know, chop the genitalia off of children. That's all that matters. Um, and you're right. You're right. That is all that matters. And that's, that's actually like, you get to the end of Paul's argument um, and he proposes a solution. Like uh, the the reason why this is important is because Paul has one solution, and James Lindsay has a very different solution to wokeism. And so I'm going to try. You know, I'm 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 only a, a few steps ahead of of Dr. Gottfried uh, in my internet abilities here, but I'm going to try to put it on the screen here for um, for our viewers. Here we go. So uh, this is. This is the end of, of the um, the argument, um, and I'll I'll just read a little bit for uh, for the listeners. Um, so he he's Paul is arguing in in this art in this article not against James Lindsay but um, against uh, Yoram Hazoni, and he's not even really arguing t you know against necessarily. He's 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 modifying some of Hazoni's points. I would say, wouldn't you agree, CJ, in, in this article? Yeah, it's it's very characteristic of, of his polemical character. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll read the last you know couple paragraphs here. We'll do a little book report uh, here on Contramundum Podcast. Uh, in the seventh chapter of Conservatism and Rediscovery, Hazoni highlights the replacement of post-World War II liberalism by woke collectivism. Uh, such a changing of the guard is seen in the abandonment of the principle of open discussion and even disagreement in favor of group cohesion. We also find self-identified liberals expressing horror at the closing of open discussion by others on the left. This closed-mindedness has caused those who cling to a liberal identity, identity to protest woke cohesiveness and a call for a return to a free society. By the way, let me just interject this. Yeah, yeah. This this describes the entire conservative movement as a whole right now. Yes. Ben Shapiro. And Lisa, yeah. yeah. Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk. Um, what's that gay guy on Prager or whatever? You're going to have to be more specific. <laughs> 
Uh, <laughs> what is his name? I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I'm proud of myself that I can't think of it. But <laughs> which, which one? See, there's too many. There's way too many. <laughs> I can't he's even. Pra- think. He's on Prager. Uh, no, is he uh, on Prager? No, he's part of the Daily Wire circuit. Um, who is it? <laughs> the guy that took the picture of with his, uh, with his ba- adopted baby or whatever. Oh, oh gosh, yes. Um, uh, okay, that okay. Uh, that guy. Uh, yeah, don't say it. We can't think of it. We don't remember. It's it's out of our minds. It's not worth. Yeah, t- our, it's not worth the bandwidth of our. Leave, of our... leave, leave it in the comments. Uh, I can't think of his name. I can see his face. <laughs> he doesn't matter. He's stupid. Um. Anyway, that guy. Um. And, and many, many more. Yeah. Um, so yeah. What, All of them. They're trying to return to this free open the open society. They're trying to return to Karl Par- Popper's open society, which was as a whole and with its momentum, the repudiation of the old right. So yes. that's what conservative incorporated is today. It's yeah. it's just this attempt to reconsolidate the liberalism that basically led us to where we are yeah. today. Yeah, it's 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 a, a different it's it's a little bit uh, uh, it's liberalism that's a little bit further to the right of the left. That's that's what it is. And I mean and this paragraph here as well, it describes James Lindsay. Like that's what James Lindsay's trying to do is Oh, you know, I, I was, he, you know, I was this liberal Democrat from like 2014 and then like wokeness took over and now I'm in, now I'm a centrist. Now I'm in the middle. Like you guys went way to the left and now I'm here and I kind of, I don't like it. And I want to go back to the way it was before wokeism took over, you know, really after Obergefell, I think is, is the demarcation line. And by the way, he's, he's said multiple times, you know, for anyone that's interested in his work, James Lindsay has said multiple times that he, he fears the right more than the left. Yes. Yes. He's the centrist. uh, And he's like, he, um, he doesn't, um, he, he doesn't want the right, like a collectivist, right. An authoritarian right to take over because that's way scarier than the the woke left right now that is dominating everything. He's he's so if he has to choose, you know, you put a gun to his head and say, okay, James Lizzie, pick between like a hardcore authoritarian right wing, right, um, you know, a Pinochet versus wokeism right now. He would say, I want wokeism instead. Like that's that's his choice. Um, so that's that's what you need to know about James Lindsay. So uh, going on, we'll we'll go back to Paul's article here. Uh, Hazoni's observation is accurate, but may require qualification. The liberalism that the woke left canceled was a greatly weakened form of the liberal persuasion, the exponents of which had already ceased to argue very convincingly for open discussion for decades. The attenuated that attenuated liberalism excluded the right except for a moderate centrist version of it that would not upset leftist gatekeepers. So let let me pause right there too. Like who is Paul talking about here? Like the actual right, the paleocon right, that's him that got excluded. Him, you know, Murray Rothbard, Pat Buchanan, all, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, Sam Francis, all of them. Mm -hmm. There's a good, everybody that, yeah. There's a good book on this. I'm I'm the book guy, right? So the, 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 just Google Gottfried, the the great purge, and you'll find a lot of this stuff. Go ahead. Yeah. All, all the, all the, um, all the guys influenced by the old right, the paleocons uh, that that kept that flame going, uh, they were kicked out by you know by um, National Review and the conservative movement and the neocons that took over in the 1980s and 90s. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the attenuated right. So when you talk about like the Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro's, the Prager U, um, and, and and people like that, um, that that's the right that's allowed. It's the controlled opposition right. That, mm-hmm. that is allowed. No, like, actual right wing was allowed within liberalism. That's a very important point that yeah. uh, Paul and, is making. So. And Paul, Paul, Paul calls these guys the conservative incorporated. You know, that's just... Yeah, 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 yeah. conservative. Yeah, that's, that's what they are. Um, so, uh, going on. Uh, the parameters of allowable discussion on many issues had become more and more restricted before a late modern form of liberalism gave up the ghost entirely. By then, universities were already being ideologically controlled, while both government and the media had prepared the way for this post-liberal age. Liberalism, in its last stages, did not suffer from an indiscriminate discriminate tolerance, a condition that thinkers as diverse as Joseph Schumpeter and Carl Schmitt viewed as liberalism's great weakness. Quite to the contrary. Mm-hmm. Late modern liberalism moved in the direction of what became the woke left, even while clinging to the illusion of openness. I'll read that again. Late modern liberalism moved in the direction of what became the woke left, 
even while clinging to the illusion of openness. So like when I was in college, and I, I think we were in college at the same time, that I saw that like firsthand in the early 2000s where like the the late you know the the um you know incipient latent woke left that was already there like it's they're in seed form um that exists but they 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 said oh we're having a free and open discussion but like if i went there and i said hey i'm i'm an evangelical christian here's what i believe um i believe abortion is bad i believe homosexuality is bad uh they would like shout you down like yeah. they would attack you and, and, and treat you like an evil, horrible person. Like that's what happened to me in class, actually, when I was in, in college. I would argue these things. Um, and so it was already there. Like the woke left was already already around. Like the the new left, you know, the sixties hippie professors were were my professors. Um, some of them were Marxists, but but that liberalism, that was going by the wayside. They they didn't they weren't allowing that anymore. Anything, any open discussion was done. You're not allowed to have it. Um so uh continuing on. Um, and those who complain about leftist intolerance practice the same vice in relation to the right until they were overtaken by greater powers on the left, right? (laughs) So he's saying, right, the people that complained about the leftist intolerance, um, right, they did the same thing to people to their right, right? So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, yeah, to to him. Well, to him, but you know who got, you know who got Sam Francis fired from the Washington Times? It was Dinesh D'Souza. One of the loudest yeah. anti-cancel culture voices right now. Oh, oh, they're they're canceling me. You know, like yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you did that to people to your right. You punched right, and now you're getting punched. Oh, boohoo! Uh, too bad. Um, exactly, exactly. Good point. So, uh, they then became the fashionable mourners of lo- of a lost tolerance, the loss of which they themselves helped bring about, which they totally did. Right. Oh, oh, like, I mean, I remember you see this with like Ben Shapiro, right? You remember like what Ben Shapiro said about Ron Paul? He said, oh, he's a horrible anti-Semite. He's a terrible guy. Uh, blah, blah. Like he, he was canceling Ron Paul. But, you know, oh, cancel culture is very bad when it happens to me. Uh, not to you, though. Um, so uh, last paragraph. Uh, this observation is not meant to invalidate Hazoni's larger point, which is correct. At some point in the last 20 years, the very ideal of open discussion and debate fell into disrepute both in institutions of higher learning and in the media. What had become a shrunken, denatured liberalism was abandoned for a successor ideology, wokeism. Further, there may be no way back to what has been resoundingly repudiated and what took generations to collapse. Only... And here's, this is, this is the quote. So pay attention. Only an equally determined collectivism can effectively resist those who have ended the liberal era or what became the pale imitation of one, right? Only an equally determined collectivism can effectively resist those who have ended the liberal era, right? That's what Paul's conclusion is. And so that's the 180 degrees opposite of, of James Lindsay. Right. right, James Lindsay doesn't believe that. Right, he thinks, oh, oh, we we could just go somehow go back to liberalism. But like, what what guys like him don't understand is like liberalism didn't just spring up from the ground. It didn't come from nowhere. It came from centuries, centuries of of cons- of, of of conservative culture, of Christian culture, developing it, shaping it, forming up the yeah. population, and this is it's the fruit of that. Mm-hmm. Like. Of of a of a love for liberty, like that's what liberalism is. Right. This so, love of liberty, and, and that doesn't just appear out of nowhere. That's that the natural state of man. You can't just go back to that and right. rewind. Like, that, to, that's not the way it works. You have to culturally earn it. So, like the way you can have a, a liberal society is when so when when the idea of like a liberalism kind of came to be. And there's always been multiple liberalisms. You could distinguish between the French and the English liberalism. So I think the English liberalism is more attractive. But one of the things that came about during the liberal debates, like take someone like Edmund Burke, who is at once Mm -hmm. both the father of conservatism and, you know, a classical, not a classical liberal uh, in an ultimate sense, but someone who appreciated the liberality that England had earned for itself. He recognized that once Christian cultural norms and i'm I'm allowed to say that because it's a christian nationalist podcast but ooh, that's right big big scary christian cultural Woo! norms had permeated throughout england so that people could act liberally because it was beyond the the bounds of their own um behavioral horizons to to be this radically woke people they were naturally 
um, they, they had they had they had natural and culturally restrained bounds on their own behavior such that you could tell them they could have freedom to behave in the way they wanted because they would never have dreamed of behaving in the libertine way that we do now. So you, yeah. so even a liberal culture needs to have some sort of hegemonic boundary on it. Otherwise, you get this like insane libertinism and this like cultural moral anarchy that what which is what we see right now. You know, yeah. so liberalism yeah. has to be earned. It can't just be declared and pursued without yeah. any boundaries or otherwise you get chaos. Well, it's it's a I mean, it's a mature civilization is is what it is. Like it's it's I mean, just like people like if I you know, uh, we both have little kids. If if I told my, you know, my three year old or my six year old, hey, you get to have liberty now. You get to do whatever you want. Like that would not be good for them. That would not be good for them. Now, if if I treated them like they're three and six years old when they're 25, that would not be good for them either, right? So, um, like, liberty, like you said, is something that has to be earned. Like, you have to mature into it as a people. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so that that's something that took um, millennia um, or at least centuries to, to be established in, in America, like even even in the founding of America, people people came here for religious liberty and other liberties. Um, but that didn't that didn't appear out of nowhere either. That came from centuries of Anglo-Saxon uh, political and religious tradition as well. Um, and, and so, like, the, the, again, it doesn't just you don't just snap your fingers and you have liberalism, you have liberty. That's not the way the world works. That's not how anything works. And and I think Paul is absolutely right. And of course, you know, CJ and I both you know dabbled uh, in libertarianism uh, in our in our you know uh, in our youth. Um, and uh, and so it, it was you know it was a nice dalliance that we had uh, back in the day. But it it, uh, it it helped you think through some issues and things, and it it helped you you know diverge from from the consensus view, you know, the 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 left liberal you know paradigm that we lived under. Uh, but there, it wasn't a final stopping point, and I don't think it can be, especially given the cultural situation that we're in. And so you see that last, like, if, if you know, 2012 me read that last line by Paul Gottfried, I would be horrified by it. What do you mean? A, an equally determined collectivism? Are you kidding me? That sounds horrible. Um, but today, well, yeah. there's, like, no other conclusion you can reach. Well, right? because, what? yeah. Can't. Paul, Paul is a, um, he's a realist, you know, he, so yeah. he, he, he interprets political needs in terms of the situation, you know, and yeah. when you have, um, a very collectivist left, that's looking to take power at every level, he recognizes that the, his responsibility as a political thinker is not to blueprint out the perfect world. His responsibility yeah. is to face challenges as they are. Yeah. Right. So like, for example, um, if you're dealing with like the Russian revolution in like 1917, right. And you're there, uh, the thing you wouldn't prescribe for the people for, for like the white army and the nobles that are fighting back against the Bolsheviks, you wouldn't say, Hey, let's, let's everybody adopt this like Rothbardian, uh, libertarianism and just, you know, laissez faire, do what we do, whatever we want. Of course. I mean, it's not very fair to Marie Rothbard because he wouldn't even say that at all. He would be like, unleash the cops, right? Unleash, <laughs> unleash, Unleash everything you have against the Bolsheviks. Um, but, uh, like, you have to recognize the reality of the situation you're in. And, and James Lindsay, I mean, it's hilarious that James Lindsay calls, <laughs> calls him an idiot because he's a, he's a moron. He's really stupid. Um, or he's a liar. I mean, I don't, I don't really know. Um, like, and it's just a big grift. Um, and his job is to keep people from reaching the same conclusion that Paul has here. Um, that could be as well. But um, I, I choose to be charitable and think he's just stupid. Um, and so, <laughs> so uh, the, the problem is, like, you have to understand you need, you need uh, authority. You need power being wielded. I mean, that's some, a, a bunch of discussion that's been online in the online right for, for quite a while. Um, and, and you see this um, in terms of, of, um, of religious liberty as well and just um, – and – the questions of, of faith and politics and, and where the role of church and state and things like this. And this, this leads me to, you know, kind of a, um, somewhat of a segue. I mean, I wrote an article recently and it's out now on Gab news, um, about this very issue. Uh, cause you see this, there were, there were, for some reason, I think it's because Joe Rigney left Bethlehem, uh, uh Baptist, uh, seminary 
for New St. Andrews. Uh, and so there was this like freak out among many Baptist people over Christian nationalism uh, and Stephen Wolf's book and, and things like this. And so you see these, you saw these guys make these really facile uh, Anabaptist arguments. Um, so one of them was Scott Aniel. I, I apologize if his, if I'm pronouncing his name incorrectly, uh, but he he's he's part of a large Baptist uh, ministry, and he was he's these guys. What they do is they decry um, nominal Christianity, like that's their their whole thing. Is like, oh, nominal Christianity is bad. You know, Christendom is bad because it produces false converts and that's really bad. Um, and, and so we can't have that. So it's better to have like just a, a secular pluralistic state where it's neutral and there isn't one official religion. But the problem is, and this is, this is where the overlap between the, the atheist neckbeard, you know, fedora, James Lindsay types, um, and, and the Baptist, you know, Anabaptist actually functionally, um, the Anabaptist view, it overlaps because they say we need to have this liberal society um, that that allows for you know freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Everybody can just have this marketplace of ideas and decide for themselves whatever they believe. The problem is that's that's not something that ever is going to last. Like you can't you that's it's sand that you're founding a society upon. You know, you can't you can't build on top of sand. It's you need you need bedrock. You need something firm, um, and it didn't last. Now the official state religion of America is wokeism. Like that that's just period. I mean it's not it's not written into the constitution. The United States of America follows the church of woke, but all you have to do is like open up your eyes and look outside and and and, and step outside your door in the month of June, right? Or or whatever. Uh, or 2 weeks ago when they they had uh transmiss um or whatever. Um like this this is that's that's the 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 world that we currently live in is living under this, this woke religious empire. I mean, uh, Jim, um, Aaron Wren has talked about this. I, I reference him all the time because I think his three worlds, you know, positive world, neutral world, world, negative world are, are really important. And so like the James Lindsay's and these Baptist guys, they want to be in neutral world permanently, right? They don't see like neutral world is this transitional state. Actually. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's this, it, it was never permanent. This, it this was, is, you know, yeah, this is exactly what Paul argued in his study of Carl Schmitt. Um, that, that and, and this is the I have an essay myself on um, it was it was written it was written in a book edited by Paul Gottfried, um, and I basically just talk about the three three different types of criticisms of liberalism. One of them was from uh, Carl Schmitt. One of them was James Burnham. And the other one was a leftist, Antonio Gramsci, and all of them okay. talked about that liberalism by its essence is always transitional it's always yeah. temporary it's always yeah. something that facilitates one type of order one positive vision to the next positive vision you can't have yeah. a negative vision the regime has to carry something with it it's going to be christianity as it lasted for a thousand years or if you don't want christianity um and a lot of people don't a lot of evangelicals don't want christianity to be yeah. the, the 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 bedrock for civilization yeah. Uh, you're going to have what we're seeing come into play now. That's just the nature of liberalism. It's the nature of neutrality. It's the nature of uh, it's the nature of of everything that took place since the 18th century. Um, that's what you get. You get this temporary society where everything's fleeting. There's nothing that lasts and it's always susceptible to take over. And guess what happened? Yeah. We got taken over. Yeah, we did. And, and and so that's that's part of it too and like the what these guys and, the, and and the reason I bring this up because I think it's incredibly dangerous and incredibly attractive to a lot of Christians to have this kind of quietistic oh, well persecution's actually good for the church because then everybody's a real convert, isn't that so great? And it's like you look at Eastern Europe during the you know, actually very short time of communism and Christianity was largely wiped out in so many of these places. And the other thing that happens under persecution, everybody wants to like LARP, like they are early Christians uh, being <laughs> right. persecuted by the Romans. Um, but what happens, it even happened then in early church history, is you get all sorts of false Christianities that are cozied up to the regime. So mm -hmm. you get like, in, in early Christianity, you had these kinds of Gnosticism that were no threat to the Roman regime because it's sort of syncretistic between what the you know Greco-Roman uh, beliefs already were um and and so and now you get you get this uh globalist american empire um 
religion that mm-hmm. believes all the same you know liberal ideas that the greatest the only sin the greatest sin is racism um that's the only sin you could actually commit um we'll talk about some of that later um that that's that's the great you know the great horrible thing and that homosexuality transgenderism that's not the bible whispers about that stuff that's no big deal feminism that's that's cool that's fine um all all this stuff like it's totally they they've they've totally syncretized the christian religion with uh, with leftism, and and that's way a way greater danger than than having a couple nom like oh there might be somebody who thinks he's a Christian that isn't actually well guess what that's what pastors are for that's what you're supposed to preach about right you're supposed to preach and and lead people into the kingdom of God and preach against their actual sins right so a, a, any any problem with you know a, you know Christianity being the the nominal official religion of a society. That that falls on the pastors, right? Preaching to their people, right? So what what happens when some other religion, when an anti-Christian religion is the official state religion, is all the churches they're they're led by cowardly people, especially in an era within evangelicalism right now, they're they're led by cowardly hireling people, men, um, who who um who are going to modify Christianity to fit with what is allowable opinion under anti-Christian leftism. That's what they do. And and so what does that do? It doesn't just produce a couple false converts. It produces entire false churches where everybody there is taught a false gospel that they're saved because they don't, they, they don't believe that they think racism is bad. That's what makes them a Christian. Um, and so um, what has to be understood is that's a way worse situation than having, you know, like Russell Moore would talk about Mayberry. Oh, Mayberry leads to hell. Uh, it's like, no, yeah, for some people it does. Uh, you know what leads to hell for an entire society? What we are, the road we are going down right now. Um, and so the article I wrote is entitled Christendom or Chaos. Like you have to choose one or the other. Um, it's not, you know, once, once the gospel comes to a nation and they once believed it, uh, there's no going back to like some ancient Greek or Roman or, or Norse paganism that, 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 that's gone. That's never coming back. Mm -hmm. All that's left is a counterfeit Christianity. Like, mm-hmm. like wokeism. That's what wokeism is. Like you have to mm-hmm. understand wokeism is a, is a false that's, Christianity without Jesus. That's, that's another, that's also another insight of Paul Gottfried. Like if you're interested in Paul yeah. Gottfried, yeah. pick yeah. up his book, Multiculturalism and the Politics of Guilt. He talks about the secularization of Protestant yeah. Puritanism. I mean, that's like his, one of his entire thesis. Yeah. So yes, hundred percent. Yeah. And so, um, so anyway, I think, I, I don't know. There's, I mean, we, we could talk for another, another 37 minutes, um, about, or, 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 or another hour or two hours about Paul Grat- Gottfried and his, um, and, and all of his insights about these things. But I, I think, um, unless you have some more points, uh, we can move on to the next topic, CJ. Yeah, no, I, I think that's good enough for now. Okay. We'll table it until next time. Uh, the, the next, uh, item of discussion and we almost did an emergency episode. We we keep we keep teasing. Oh, wait, maybe we'll do an emergency episode. Maybe maybe we will. Maybe we will. It's, it's cuz um, all the it's all we record on Thursdays and all the exciting news comes out before the weekend on Friday. I know, it's like Thursday night or Friday is when stuff <laughs> yeah. happens. Um and so, uh fr- last Friday, uh, uh Daniel Perry, who was an Uber driver, a, a former uh um army um enlisted man, he uh um, in, in Austin, Texas, he shot a, a BLM loser, um, who pointed an AR at him. Um, and, uh, the police said it was a justifiable homicide. They had a 900 page report that said this is a justifiable homicide, which of course you're, you are stopped by a mob and a guy points an AR 15 at your window, at your face. Apparently, according to this jury in the Soros backed DA, he has to pull the trigger on the AR before you can shoot back. Apparently, um, is the only conclusion you can That's reach. That's what they said. That's what they said about Rittenhouse too. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to, you have to get shot in the head first before you could fire on someone. Uh, absolutely insane. Um, and so, this man was convicted. This man was convicted on Friday of mm-hmm. of murder. Um, and um, in the state of Texas. Right in Austin, Texas. I mean, it's it's the bluest part of a, of a red state, but it's nevertheless it's a red state. They have a governor, uh, Greg Abbott, who you know um, a lot of people want to criticize. There's some definitely some things to criticize about. He's he's done some good things as well. Um, you can have worse governors than Greg Abbott, but you can have better ones as well. Um, and uh, to Abbott's credit, uh, he he said um, almost immediately, pretty quick um, on Twitter that he he wants to pardon Perry. Uh, he can't 
according to the Texas Constitution, because the some bureaucrat, and this is what is horrible. They need to change this. Um, this bureaucratic board, the Texas Parole uh, Board, or, or whatever it's called, has to make a recommendation on him to pardon Perry. And he said, I'm, I asked them to expedite the process and, and move it up. Um, but, I mean, for one, the state of Texas has to absolutely amend their constitution, give unilateral authority of, of clemency and pardons to the governor, like most other states. Um, why even have a governor if he can't do that on his own? Um, and, and But secondly, I mean, again, back to the theme of anarcho-tyranny, um, you know, with Ricky Vaughn, with Trump being indicted, um, that there cl- very clearly are two, there is not equality under the law in America. And it's, it's, that's been a theme for a long time, but it is obvious now. There is no way around this that there are two laws for two different kinds of people. If you are, if you are in any way an opponent of the regime, there's a different set of laws for you. You will be a political prisoner. And Daniel Perry is a political prisoner in the state of Texas. That's what he's not a criminal. He is a political prisoner like in other countries. Right. You want you know, to talk about Russia. You want to talk about the communist Chinese putting people, political prisoners in jail, which they do. I mean, they put Christians in jail, actually. Um, we do the same thing here. The United States of America does the exact same thing now. Uh, Ricky Vaughn, Daniel Perry, all of them are political prisoners in the United States of America. That's what's going on. Well, I will just say, too, it was um, was it last week or, or no, it was last week. It was a few weeks ago. Well, we talked about the fact that there was that crazy uh, black guy on the train that was like tormenting that family. Yes. And everyone on Twitter was saying that this guy should have gone up and showed. Just man up. Yes. Man up, man. Be a man. Yeah. And we well, talked about Daniel how. Daniel Perry was a man. Exactly. You know, that. It was, and, and Perry made the right decision, obviously. Because. No, exactly. Because, Not because the gun was to it. Yeah. Right. Because the gun was to his head or, you know, it was, no. it was at his car. But, but the point, the, the point is that. It just showed, it just completely vindicated our position that you have to recognize that in America there are two justice systems. Yeah. And it, it, like all the liberal myths of like a fair justice system and you can trust the law, all those things that you were taught in civics class in fifth grade do not apply anymore. They've been rendered null and void by the revolution. You are in a different world. You are in a different world. It does not exist anymore. And so, like, the recommendation from here, from, from me and, f- and from anybody that, like, is paying attention is if you live in Austin, Texas, even though it's a red state, great state, get out of there. It, you need, Like, who your district attorney is matters more even than who your governor is or anything else. 100%. Um, so whoever the city attorney is, the county attorney, um, you need to know what their politics is because that could be the difference between life and death or it could be the difference between 20 years in jail over nothing. Or tw- mm-hmm. ten years of jail over memes, right? Mm-hmm. That's what it could mean. Um, of course, like um, uh, Ricky Vaughn's case is a federal one. They could have they could have prosecuted him anywhere in the country according to their ridiculous logic. Um, but that's that's the point that we have to understand is again totally anarcho tyrannical regime. Uh, you you will be made a political prisoner. But the best thing you could do is is make yourself safe in the community that you live in, where you live really, really, really matters. Um, and, and I, I mean, I look at this as well. One of the other things I, I mentioned already that, uh, to our shame, uh, we were these libertarian guys, eh, maybe not shame. I don't know. Uh, it was a different world, uh, back in the, in the early two thousands. Um, but you, you saw these like libertarian accounts, the libertarian party of Austin or whatever. It was like, Oh, uh, because this, this guy that he shot, this, dork this goon that that uh you know deserved what he got um uh, maybe i'll have to edit that out if we get censored uh but oh who cares uh <laughs> like you know this this evil person who was protesting um for racial justice oh uh and and blocking traffic and pointing making it it was a checkpoint an illegal checkpoint uh pointing guns at people um he uh, was a part of the Libertarian Party, which uh, at this point, like libertarianism is kind of bifurcated. Like you have libertarians, good ones that, that we like, um, but they have right wing sympathies. And so they they hate guys like this, rightfully so. Uh, but you also have these like lefty libertarians where libertarianism just means like smoking pot and having, you know, prostitution and gay sex and things like that. Like that's what this guy was, right? This guy was this like leftist idiot uh, libertarian. And 
Um, so you shouldn't have any respect for libertarians like that whatsoever. The, these people have shown you what they are when the chips are down and you're at the rubber is meeting the road. They have proven precisely what they are. And they're going to side with your enemies that want you dead in a ditch. That's, that's what they do. And people, the people celebrating the conviction, anyone celebrating the conviction is your enemy. Period. Well, my view of my view of that and specific to the libertarian movement is that um, the same thing happened to it as happens to so many other institutions because the libertarian, the modern, like not, not, not the modern libertarian movement, but really the, the yeah. libertarian momentum after two, like after Obama came about because yeah. of Ron Paul and Ron Entirely. Paul was Ron Paul was a very conservative person. Mm -hmm. Like he's mm -hmm. he's really like he's he's um, he's like one of the most conservative, just traditionally conservative people in Congress at the time. So I think what happened is is the libertarian institution kind of got full of feds. I think they kind of yeah. co-opted it and they turned it into this like pathetic um, like regime libertine party kind of thing. And that's yeah. kind of what happened to it. And so anytime you see libertarian, you don't trust it. Like people like Jeff Dice, who is no longer at the Mises Institute, I think he doesn't – I think he really just gets really cringy. Like he hates the word libertarian movement, doesn't want to be associated with it at all, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, just, just yeah. because of trends like that. So You can, the, you can understand why. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, so actually the one that was really pushing the anti-Perry -Per, uh, line was, was actually Reason Magazine. Uh, it was all it was all those guys, you know, who were, who were pushing it. So it makes sense, though. It's just part of the regime yeah. narrative. Um, it like the idea of like James L Lindsay's like objective legal system is so beyond our capabilities <laughs> right now. Like, I know. Yeah. You no, know, like you have to have political power and you have to exercise it against the weaponized DAs. That's the only thing that can stop this. You have yeah. to have political power, not the pursuit of some objective liberal justice. That worked great in like 1775. That was fantastic. When, when, when you had a society, like when you actually had a people, when you had a people capable of, of practicing and exercising liberty, we don't have that. We could. We could. But the things that we are, are undoing and tearing apart aren't so easily put back together. Right? It takes... It takes a lot of time to rebuild the kind of society and culture capable of sustained liberty. And it also takes um, a lot of uh, bad stuff happening to bad people. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I can't elaborate anymore, but like that, that's what it takes. Um, and, and what people uh, need to understand is that there, there needs to be political power exercised. Like power, there has to be power exercised against, like in, in this case in, in, in particular, these DAs, like, they need to be put in jail, right? They need to be put in jail. Who cares what the charge is? They, you need to lock them up. They need to go to, like, the best thing that Trump ever said, and which he did, was, I mean, and what maybe all of us excited to vote for him in 2016 was when he said to Hillary, you know, oh, it's just awfully nice that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump does the charge of the laws in our country. Because you'd be in jail, right? Uh, like, that, that. And it's like, and, and people freaked out over that comment the next couple of days. Like, oh, they're going to try, you, he's going to jail a political opponent? That's a banana republic, third world kind of thing to do. Uh, that's not America. Um, and and now well, it's actually it is. To him. Yeah, yeah. Because you didn't do it. Now it's now that's on the table for you. Um, yeah. And so the next guy, whoever, or maybe it's him. I don't know. Uh, the next guy needs to, that needs to be on the table. And you need to be gloves off. You need, and that's what you need to campaign on. It's right? time. It's time for an Anglo Bukele. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that, that's what we need here in America is, is someone to, um, to rule with an iron fist and to crack skulls of these people like that. That's the only way this will stop. That's the only thing they they're not going to respond to well-reasoned, well thought out arguments. They're going to respond to like James Lindsay's 9,000 point uh, plan to bring back liberalism. Like that, they, they don't care about that. They don't care about, they only care about power. That's it. That's yeah. it. So, uh, speaking of which, uh, we have a little bit more time left. Uh, but uh, 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 recently, uh, uh, we've we've both noticed that uh, there are there are people who are not fans of um, of you know dissident right uh, politics on the internet. Have you noticed this, CJ? That there are critics of it. Yeah, they're very suspicious critics, and they're they're trying to get popular by collecting names and you know, leaking them to journalists. And we had an experience of that yeah. myself. I, I actually, this guy responded to me too. 
um, about like because I was making fun of him. But uh, I don't know because you. We don't really want to say his name and give him. We're not going to give you his his account. If he, maybe he's attacked some of you, um, but this guy, uh, this 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 guy, this total loser, um, is being promoted and and uh, by really awful people, um, who are always wrong about everything that you should despise. Um, you know, they were wrong about everything with COVID. They're wrong about everything. You know, fr- you know, every, every racial, uh, grievance, anti-white thing that happens. They're always on the wrong side of that. Uh, they're on the wrong side of every political decision. They're always on the side of the left. They're always, they're always punching us, but they're, they, they claim to be, you know, conservative Christians. Oh yeah. Okay. I believe you. Um, and, and so they're promoting these people the, the, some of these guys, one, one account in particular, and he's collecting a dossier. Well, who, who, who is, is this like, is he just really autistic and this is his hobby? Um, or is he a fed? We don't really know. Maybe both. Um, but, uh, the, it's attracting attention. And, uh, all I have to say is like block people like this. Don't give them the time of day. Don't even, and don't defend yourself from people like this. Right? right. That's, that's the other thing you, you don't owe them anything because that, their entire job in their, yeah. in their, in their false religion of, of liberalism, right? Fake liberal Christianity. They believe that they're Christians because they are anti-racist. They're anti-racist and, and anti, uh, right wing, right? That's what's going to get them into heaven, right? They have the right politics, uh, against evil, horrible, bad people. Um, and so just don't, don't even, don't even give them the time of day. They don't deserve it. Just laugh at them. They're ridiculous losers. That's what they are. I have nothing else to add, you know, except, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, it's funny because, I mean, like we could talk about a defense of it, but like, I think it's also my temptation to defend myself, but oh, you're but right. Everyone's, yeah. I mean, but that's part of what, what makes, what makes the online right something that can't be stopped is the fact that we absorb these like criticisms and these very mm-hmm. serious people and we just make fun of them. Yeah. And that's what builds our momentum because we're having fun. Yeah. They're yeah, not exactly. having fun. They're miserable. You know, they're and- miserable. They're sanctimonious people. Like, oh, I can't believe you made a joke about that. Can you believe they joked about this thing? Oh, man. But oh, the- it's so terrible. And the point of the joke, though, is to get those types of reactions. That's what's so yeah. funny. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. Like, we want we want you to react that way. So, well done. You're doing what we want. You're you're a loser. <laughs> you people are losers who think you're so much better than everybody else because you have the right liberal values and you're such a cosmopolitan, wonderful person. Well, no, you're you're not. You you are going to go down with the regime, and we will remember when we win. Uh, but 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 the the flip side of it is, um, it's 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 way more fun to make fun of these people, right? It's way more fun to mock them because um they 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 have nothing. Right, they have nothing going on. They have nothing better to do than than compile lists of things that people say and and tweets they like and and people they follow on social media. Oh man, oh boy, oh can't believe you retweeted that. Who cares, right? Who cares about this stuff? Like, are you gonna go tell my mom? Right? Are you gonna go tattle on me? Uh, are you gonna tell teacher, teacher? He he retweeted a bad joke. Oh my goodness! Like no, like these yeah, these so. these are hall monitors. These are these people are jokes. Give me a yeah. break. So, but at the same time, like, do be careful. Like if you, if you're in a, an employment situation where you're susceptible to those kind of things, just be careful, stay anonymous. All those things are still apply. Yeah. If you're not, if, if you're not susceptible, if you can put your name and your face on something and say whatever you want, uh, then I think you also have like the obligation to do it, you know, yeah, like absolutely yeah, get out there and, and defend yourself, defend your culture, defend your way of life. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing. Like all of this stuff, all all of the like the online right and why it's fun, uh, because it does it does like uh, you know we we pee in these people's Cheerios and it it's it, it really it's hilarious because they they just they go nuts over this stuff because they're so sanctimonious, they're so self righteous, they're they're so pious about these things, um, and it's hilarious to watch them squirm over it. Um, and, and I mean, I saw it like you, you see this, I mean, going back to the Baptist conversation, you know, I retweeted this, Stephen Wolf brought, you know, uh, tweeted this, our, our, our very first guest, um, there, there's a critic of, of my book and Stephen's books, uh, book, um, Andrew T. Walker, is he with, is he with, uh, Southern Baptist, Baptist seminary? I can't remember what, what group he's with. It doesn't really matter. Some Baptist guy, political, whatever, uh, scholar. Ooh. Um, and, uh, he, he was, he was tweeting about some symposium that they're holding about politics and culture and, and church and state and whatever. Um, 
And Stephen, Stephen says, um, why, why is it that, that Baptists don't want um, the state to prosecute blasphemy or, or suppress ba- blasphemy? But they do want the state to suppress uh, statements of racism. Right. Why is that? Question. It's a really. It's a very good question question because anti-racism is the state religion. Yes. That is the state religion, and they're perfectly fine having that be the state religion because they could LARP as as first century Christians or or early early church Christians. Oh, we're being persecuted! Isn't this so wonderful? Um, Meanwhile. The things that our ancestors built over generations, over hundreds of years, they are happy burning down. They're like, oh, if they burn that down, that's fine. Who cares? Um, that, that, it's so ridiculous, the, these views that they have. And it's, it's all, all born out of cowardice. These people are cowards. They are terrified to say anything that might be deemed unacceptable. That's 100% of what it is. They're, they're, it's not, it does, they don't believe this stuff. They don't, in their heart of hearts, believe it's true. They're, they're cowards. That's what they are. They're, ter- they're terrified to say the truth. Right? They're terrified to say the truth. That, uh, and, to, and to, like CJ says, to defend um, our, our nation. Like Just even having a nation, having a country, having a place of your own, a people of your own, um, you know, being proud of the United States, that you, the place you were born in, um, you're, you're not allowed to do that. Right, we're supposed to be this global cosmopolitan society um, where no, you know, no one is illegal. Blah blah blah, like all this stupid garbage. Um, that's that's their religion. That's what they actually believe. And so, um, I always this, find it I always find yeah. it funny that too. But like, these are the loudest voices against the mixing of politics and religion, and then they'll like use these really <laughs> yeah. vague like cliches that come out of the Bible as justification for their internationalism. It's like one of the funniest. Yeah. It's like one of the most ironic yeah. things. You know, like, uh, yeah, it's I, yeah. They're, it's they're like, oh, on. oh, the Bible. No, no, yeah, no, it is. Um, yeah, the Bible. We can't, we can't apply the Bible to politics. We can't, we can't say that here's what God says about you know sexual relations and how we sh- it should be regulated or whatever, or how abortion is bad or even, or even, um, yeah, or any or you know feminism. What the Bible says about feminism. Uh, or or headship and authority, things like that. We can't apply any of that to society, to culture, to any of it. Um, but <laughs> but all of a sudden, like the discussion turns to immigration, and all of a sudden they become Rusas J. Rushduni, right? They're like, oh, let's look to Leviticus real quick and see what it says, and that's what we should do. Every Christian, if you don't believe that, you're not a Christian. Like that's how they act. It's 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 ridiculous. It's amazing. Like oh, all this other stuff we can't apply that. Otherwise, that's theonomy or that's that's theocracy. But if the Bible somehow maybe we could we could shoehorn it into overlapping with with liberal uh, you know paradigm, then we should do that. Then 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 they become you know gung ho about applying the Bible to to all of life. Uh, it's <laughs> it's hilarious. It's amazing. So um, all all that is to say, um, be careful out there, guys. Uh, uh, if if you have to be careful, but if you if if you have the ability to speak up. Uh, you ha- you need to um, that that you you need to be able to say the truth uh, because it's it's nothing is going to change un- until we do. You're going to be stuck. I mean, we're it's we're going to continue to go down this road. Of, it's not going to get even stuck here. I almost said that we're not going to be stuck here. It's going to continue to get worse. Mm-hmm. Things are going to get much 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 worse until we have people that stand up and say what is true. That say the emperor has no clothes. And there are going to be people keeping a list of all the people saying, oh, he said the emperor has no clothes. He said he said a naughty thing. Yeah. He said a bad thing. Teacher, teacher. Right? That's what's going to happen. I, That's the future for you. Yeah. And I, I know we only have like a minute left. Um, but I I will say also, the last thing I'll say is look at A.D. Robles' response. <laughs> yes. That's, That's his apology. Perfect. His apology. <laughs> perfect. It was perfect. Yeah, perfect. absolutely. I'm going to link to it uh, on the notes because it was yes. hilarious. It was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, and the books as well. Um, so with that, with that, um, maybe we'll have AD as a guest sometime soon. Uh, that would be wonderful. He could give us a he give us a master class in how to apologize to woke idiots. Um, but <laughs> uh, what do you have uh, for this week that that you want to plug that you want our our, our listeners and viewers to take a look at? 
Uh, cjingle.substack.com is my uh, where I write and at Contra Mortar on Gab and Twitter. Um, you can check out the Chronicles Magazine podcast as well if you want to, and um, that's all I have. Yeah, the content uh, at Chronicles Podcast has has been really good. Uh, I've benefited from it greatly, and and you know, CJ's being modest. The uh, Chronicles Magazine, you should read this latest issue as well. Uh, phenomenal yeah, you- stuff. Um, and uh, for me, I just I just published an article at at, at news.gab.com. Uh, please go there and check it out. It, it, it elaborates on this whole, you know, uh, so much of what we discussed already. And I'll have future articles. I teased last week that I have one about World War II. I, ha- I don't have it done yet. I'm very sorry. Easter weekend, you know, got the better of, of, of me. <laughs> uh, but uh, that should be out hopefully uh, very soon as well. Um, and you can t- continue to follow uh, me at, uh, at Boniface Option on, on Gab and Twitter and wherever you find your social media stuff. Um, and, and so, again, uh, please like and subscribe and click, you know, and, and comment. Uh, tell us tell us what you think of the podcast. Um, only good things, at least uh, for me. Um, yeah, at least you can, for, you at can least criticize CJ. Yeah, you can <laughs> criticize CJ all you want. Um, but uh, yeah, please please share it with with uh, friends. We we uh, we're doing this totally for free. Uh, we're doing it for. Uh, we're, we're not doing it to get rich. Uh, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, but we're, we're doing it because we, we want this this stuff to, to get out. We want these ideas to, to be out there. We want people to be encouraged more than anything, to be encouraged to, to speak the truth, to think rightly, uh, to say what must be said, to stand against the world, um, because that's that's the kind of, of courage you are going to have to summon. And so if you, if you want that, if you want that courage to spread... If you want the the spirit of contramundum to to grow, please share it. Please get this in front of as many people as you can. Uh, But with that said, uh, I hope that you have a wonderful week, and we will see you next time.